Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do something different. I thought I would do a sort of like day in my life vlog. I haven't planned a video for this week and I am going to be doing something very exciting today. So I thought it would be fun to vlog it. So it is Saturday and I have filmed the vegan view. So we did a cream cheese taste test where we tasted six vegan cream cheeses and um it was really fun so now basically i don't even want to show you this but i'm going to so that's my setup i have my closet door open um so i can like put the camera in there and everything is a mess right now and i'm about to clean it but first i have to um edit my part of the footage and it's Nisha's week to edit. So I'm going to send it off to her. That's what I'm doing. Um, and then after I'm going to clean this situation and um, make it presentable because I am getting a new foster puppy, which I'm so excited. I've had quite a few since I last vlogged about having a foster puppy, but I post most of that on Instagram. I have a whole stories highlight. So if you want any kind of like puppy love updates, you can go over there and check that out. I'm on my phone right now because my camera is charging, so hopefully it's not too shaky, but um, yeah. So I basically just got a text from the rescue. They sent me a couple pictures of a couple dogs that they're gonna be getting, and they asked if I was free, and um, I am. So I am going to go pick up one of them today at five. I'm so excited, um, but one thing, that I really wanna make sure I do is make sure the house is spotless before the dog gets here. And I do that for a couple of reasons. First, everyone always says like, I'd love to foster, but now it's not a good time. It's never a good time. It's literally never a good time. Um, I always have things going on, but the alternative is that the dog is in the cold shelter, um, miserable, it's literally hell. Um, so for me, it's like a no brainer. I may not be able to give them, you know, enough attention and it might not be the best time, but it's going to be better than them being in the shelter, hands down. So, you know, all it really is just about giving them a nice warm spot to rest their head and some love until they can get adopted. I, that kind of went off on a tangent, but basically my whole thought process is that I like to have my space clean because then if my space is clean, then I feel a lot more clear headed and a lot more focused and I feel like I can take on another thing, like a foster dog. So um, I'm gonna do that for that. Also, because um, I don't know her history, I don't know really where she came from, and I just wanna make sure that there's nothing out that she can chew on or trip on, or you know, just I just wanna make sure that it's as safe as possible for her. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna obviously put away like all the camera equipment and stuff, and yeah. Um, so I'm excited. I'm not sure which dog I'm going to get. I, I tell the rescue, like my preference is smaller dogs that are shy. And that's pretty much the only thing I ask for because Zoe is very, very, um, alpha. And so she's gotten into it. We've had a couple dogs that were pretty alpha as well. And she does kind of get into it with them. So, um, I mean, it's ne never anything we can't handle, but like if I had a choice, I'd rather have one that's super submissive because they just kind of fit with the hierarchy of our <laughs> dogs because he's like the most submissive dog ever. So he gets along with every dog. Never have to worry about that. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to take you guys along so you could see what it's like getting a foster dog and like the start to finish kind of progress of it. So that's what we're doing today. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to edit this footage and send it off and probably watch some Selling Sunset while I do that because I've been watching that as background noise and I can't decide how I feel about this show. <laughs> I love reality TV, I love trash reality, but I can't tell if I like it or if I'm just running out of reality TV shows to watch. So, there's that. You don't even know what's coming, do you? Don't even know. All right, so this is a perfect example of <laughs> why it's never a good time. Um, 
So I got a call from the rescue. They're actually, the dogs are already there. I got there at three. So I was planning for five, thought I was gonna have a couple hours to clean and I didn't. So um, no big deal. We adjust um, and it'll be fine. I'll just clean when I get back here with her. My video is exporting. So I've got some time and yay. Okay, I just got to where I'm picking her up and yeah, I'm excited. I have my mask because we are still social distancing, being responsible. All right, this is Indiana. Hi, cutie. So she's about one years old. She just got fixed, so it's hot, so I'm gonna blast the air. Um, but she just got fixed, so she's a little out of it. She's a little suspicious of who I am, but she's a sweet girl, and she's gonna go meet my pups now. You ready to go? All right, we just got home, so I'm going to go get the dogs. They're going crazy. I think they know something's up, um, but yeah. So how I usually do this is I just let them meet her. It's as simple as that. <laughs> All right. You hear them? You hear the doggies? <laughs> Shoot, she followed me upstairs. Okay, they're coming down. She followed me upstairs, so. Oh, who is this? Who's this? They already got their sniffs in, which is typically what they do. And she's probably just gonna explore the house now. It's typically how it goes. You missed it. <laughs> but um, basically she just snarled at both Archie and Zoe. And I just gave her a very firm no. Um, and she looked at me and was like, oh, I'm not supposed to do that. She's just trying to claim me because she's spent 30 minutes in the car with me. Yeah, you just have to like set those rules up really quick. I also think because she just got spayed, sometimes they're like, hey, I'm in pain, like back off. So that could be it too. So she's just chilling on the couch with me. I have a towel down because she got fixed. And when she got fixed, they realized she was in heat. So she might be bleeding a little bit. Um, nothing like too crazy, but just in case, didn't want to stain the blankets or the couch. So yeah, she's just sleeping. I'm gonna try to walk her with my other two dogs in a bit. Um, when I, oh, this is annoying. When I tried to walk her to my car and out from my car, she was like kind of just standing still and I, and I kind of had to tug on the leash. So I don't know if she's used to walking on a leash, kind of seems like not, but I'm gonna try walking her with the other two and that might help. Um, what fleas? Um, hopefully she walks because I need to make sure she knows to go potty outside. All right, so we just went on a walk. Um, she's definitely not leash trained and it was really hard for me to walk all three of them. Oh my God, my lipstick. But yeah, it was really hard to do with all three of them so I didn't film anything, um, but she, Definitely is not used to walking on a leash, um, but by the end, I feel like she got it. And I think it really helps when you have other dogs too, cause they're like walking and showing her what she's supposed to be doing. So that helped. Um, and now I'm just trying to decide if I want to cook dinner or Postmates. Jessie is out of town right now for work. And usually if I cook, it's for both of us. So I'm not like, there's like nothing really sounding amazing right now if I were to cook it for just me. Um, so I might Postmates, I might treat myself. Oh, good girl, she just hopped up, good girl. Um, yeah, I feel like I deserve a Postmates tonight. So I ended up ordering from this restaurant called Fresh. They have really good vegan food, it's all vegan. And this, I forget what the name of this bowl is, but it's got soba noodles, broccoli, bok choy, kale, tahini, some like crunchy bits on top, tempeh, ginger, and then I got an extra side of the peanut sauce. And then I don't know what that is, but maybe hot sauce. I don't know, we'll try it out. But I'm so excited and I'm glad I ordered because now we can just chill on the couch with this lady. I think she's really starting to warm up to me. And she kind of follows me around everywhere. It's really cute. So 
Yeah. Okay, Zoe. I finished dinner and then I remembered I had this Olipop, which I've heard so many people talk about. I've never tried one before. It's like a sparkling drink. I don't really, I don't really know. It says it supports digestive health, but like, I can tell you as someone with digest, <laughs> digestive problems, it probably doesn't. Um, it's probably just like better than a soda. Concentrate, inulin, eh, maybe. Who knows? Okay, let's get to go. Cheers. It's pretty good. Definitely can taste the vanilla. It's not super cherry tasting, but it kind of tastes like a cherry pie. I do feel like this is a good, like sweet craving type of thing. We're still on the couch because she's in pain i can tell and like doesn't really know where to go so i just try to set up a nice little area for her so she feels comfortable and yeah maybe tomorrow she'll be feeling a little better hopefully all right so she's eating in the crate right now and this is actually where she slept last night so she's been really good in the crate she doesn't cry and I just try to make it a positive experience. So I like feeding them in the crate. It also helps with food aggression. Like if she felt like Zoe was gonna try to eat her food, she might growl and snap at her. So this just kind of helps like keep the peace between them. And also it's really good for potty training. So she, we took our, I took her on a walk this morning and she did not pee, <laughs> even though I thought she might. And then of course we come back home and she pees on the floor. So, now I know she's definitely not potty trained and this is gonna help us get her in a routine. So after she eats, I'm gonna wait like 30 minutes to an hour and then take her on another walk and see if I can get her to go to the bathroom outside where I will praise her. So yeah, I'm not a dog trainer, but I have had quite a few fosters and this is just kind of the routine I do with each of them and it seems to work out pretty well. She did not want to pee or poop on that walk. So we're just gonna chill for a little, but eventually she is gonna need to try to go outside again. So she learns, so I can give her praise and she learns that going outside is a good thing. But um, I did want to touch on the crate really quick because I do want to clarify that crates are not a babysitter um, and they should, and we only have them for foster dogs or when we have somebody here cleaning our house and we need to put the dogs up so they don't attack them. <laughs> um, but other than that, we don't really use crates. That's just kind of where the dogs eat and it's just like a safe, comforting spot for them. Um, but for foster dogs, it's really good for potty training um, and just like getting them into a routine. And it also makes it easier for them to transition to a new home if they have like a safe space like a crate because then it's less like jarring for them when they go into a new home. So she seems to really like it, so it's gonna work well for her, but I have had foster dogs in the past where the crate was just like not an option. Like they hated it, it caused them so much distress, and so I'd rather not put them through distress if it's not happening for them. But um, yeah, so crate at night, and then only for like an hour a time at a time during the day, but like the crate is not meant to be a babysitter, but yeah, just wanted to touch on that. Who's that? Well, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs>